This video is sponsored by Wondershare and the all new PDF Element 7. PDF Element features a redesigned UI, advanced writing tools, improved team collaboration features, more powerful conversion tools, a user management console, and more. PDF Element features a super advanced and easy to use editor that makes marking up your documents easy. You can also easily add images, highlight text, and sign PDFs, and even use advanced features like built-in optical character recognition that can accurately turn scanned documents into searchable, editable text. Check out the link in the description to try PDF Element completely for free and get 50% off if you decide to buy. And thank you again to PDF Element for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's going on everyone, Greg here. And last month we did a lot of content covering the brand new 13 inch entry level MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. And I love to do some longer form content when I get the chance. And this 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think warrants a one month later update because I have been using it very frequently, especially over my older 15 inch MacBook Pro. So I wanted to kind of give you some updates and some more findings of using this laptop for over a month now. And we're just gonna go over some of the things like how I use this laptop, the battery life on it, the performance, heat, fan noise, and of course that butterfly keyboard and if there are any reliability issues that you should be worried about. Now, of course, this being a one month later video, I really don't have to go over some of the things like the design of this laptop. You, by this point, know what the laptop looks like, but basically I have the Space Gray 13 inch MacBook Pro. It weighs about three pounds. It's pretty thin and light given its class and power performance. Of course, it also has a great display with the P3 wide color gamut and now a true tone display on that entry level MacBook Pro. And it also has some really good sounding speakers. However, I did want to pick up this point of the design of the MacBook Pro again, because I do have the 15 inch higher end version of the MacBook Pro and this lower end 13 inch. And now I understand that I am in a very, very privileged position where I have two different laptops that I can pick and choose from. And I know that is not certainly the everyday scenario for almost anyone out there. But because I do have these two laptops, I have been finding that when I am going outside, whenever I want to pack a laptop to bring with me, edit some videos, work on something, or just for some light browsing usage when I don't want to bring my iPad along, I have been picking that 13 inch MacBook Pro over the 15 inch, I guess every single time that I have to throw it in my book bag. The 13 inch is obviously a better travel companion weighing one pound less than the 15 inch and it can fit in a wider variety of bags because of its smaller footprint. And the quad core processor is surprisingly even powerful, even for the type of tasks that I do on it, like video and photo editing. And because it does have that smaller size and because it does pack in a respectable amount of power, it almost makes it the perfect laptop for work, school, or just travel. Now, by far the biggest downside I've had with the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro is that I've had to use only two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. And if you didn't know, both the 13 inch and 15 inch higher end versions of the MacBook Pro both come with four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. Now, my main frustration with only having two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports is when I am doing photo or video editing, my current workflow is to attach a external Thunderbolt 3 solid state drive, and then I import my videos and photos from an SD card, and of course, the MacBook Pros don't have an SD card slot, so I have to use a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C adapter. So I have to have both of those things plugged in to offload video and photo files with only two ports. Sometimes I'll have to charge and load all these files at the same time. So I have to momentarily remove the USB-C charger and then plug in my SD card adapter and my Thunderbolt 3 external drive. And then I'll have to wait until the SD card is finished importing and then I can remove that SD card and reinsert the charger. So when I am out and about and I'm trying to edit a video and I didn't charge my laptop the night before, that has been somewhat of a burden. It's also troublesome when you want to charge on either side of the computer, which is a small but nice benefit to having the USB-C ports on both sides like the higher end 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pro models. Now, I don't think that being limited to two ports is going to be a deal breaker for everyone and it's even not a deal breaker for me, but it is something that does frustrate me from time to time. 
All right, so let me talk more about the Butterfly keyboard. And yes, if you've been watching this channel since I've been doing this MacBook Pro and MacBook Air coverage, we have talked a lot about the third generation Butterfly keyboard, which has now been updated with new materials. Apple isn't calling it a fourth generation Butterfly keyboard, but for simplicity's sake, we will call it the fourth generation Butterfly keyboard. So again, Apple did update this fourth generation keyboard with two new material changes that were supposed to fix the issue of stuck or repeating keys. Now, I'm sure most of you watching this video are saying, okay, after one month, how is your butterfly keyboard? Is it damaged beyond repair? Did you get a stuck or repeating key? Did you eat a sandwich over it and get crumbs in it and now you had to send it off to Apple for repair? No, I haven't had any of those issues. If people have been watching this channel since I started it, you would know that I have personally never had any issues with any of the butterfly keyboards even dating back to the original 2016 MacBook Pro, which I still do have, and it still doesn't have any sort of key issues. And that's no different for my 2019 entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro. My butterfly keyboard is still working just fine. I like the way that the butterfly keys feel, and I think that this generation of keyboard is Apple's best yet. It combines a lot of the precision of the older generation of keyboards, but it does make it quieter with that membrane, so you're not annoying other people as you type. So the butterfly keyboard is perfectly fine, right? Well, no, it's actually a little bit more complicated. So I had a viewer of the channel, Jason from JB Vids reach out to me and he actually showed me a video of his 13 inch entry level MacBook Pro, the same one we're reviewing in this video with that updated fourth generation butterfly keyboard. He had the issue of stuck and repeating keys in only two weeks and he actually returned that laptop back to Apple. Now Jason's laptop is probably one of the only 2019 models that I've personally heard so far of having a keyboard issue and this calls into questions Apple's claims that they fixed this keyboard with that material change. However, I would like to note that this keyboard is covered under the four year repair program so if you did have any issues you could send it back to Apple and they should be able to fix that free of charge. Now, even with Jason's laptop, it is a little bit strange that it broke in just two weeks. So it could have just been a dud. Most of these butterfly keyboards, even if they are kind of faulty, don't really break down that quickly usually. Usually it takes a couple of months to a year before you start experiencing any sort of issues. But I did wanna throw in Jason's experience here because this is definitely a cause for concern. If you are worried about the keyboard's reliability in any way, you still may wanna hold out on purchasing an Apple laptop until they completely fix the keyboard by replacing it with a new scissor switch mechanism which is rumored to be coming as soon as October with a 16 inch MacBook Pro and then the MacBook Air and then this entry level MacBook Pro should be updated sometime in 2020. Okay, and hopefully I can finally stop talking about the butterfly keyboard. Now, another thing I wanna mention is that this entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro also comes equipped with the touch bar for the first time on the entry level model. After using the touch bar for a month, it's definitely hit or miss depending on how you use it. I personally still like it for things like resizing my brushes in programs like Affinity Photo, but if Apple does plan to keep this around, they really need to roll it out to an external keyboard for the iMac. I keep switching between those two devices too much that when the touch bar isn't always there, I'm less likely to learn and use it in new ways. And if you're like me and you're constantly switching between a desktop Mac and this laptop, then you'll probably feel this pain point as well. Now, what is awesome on that 13 inch MacBook Pro is that it does come with the Touch ID sensor, which the old entry level 2017 version did not come with. And that just makes logging into your Mac, logging into third party applications that support Touch ID or filling in passwords on a website just super fast and super easy. And it is a welcome addition. However, even after one month of using it, I still hope that we see Face ID on Macs. I've gotten really used to that on my iPhone XS, my iPhone XR, and of course the new iPad Pros. And I would really, really like to see the next generation of Macs adopt Face ID. Touch ID is great, but it almost seems like Face ID would be even better on the Mac. All right, let's talk a little bit more about performance. Now this is a one month later video and I don't wanna go over all those benchmarks again. If you wanna watch a video with a ton of benchmarks, I'll leave a link up here so you can watch them. 
but basically for everyday tasks, this 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro is flawless. I haven't noticed any sort of slowdowns. Of course, that means you can browse the web with multiple tabs, take notes, or do any other simple activities that you would on a Mac. You don't really have to worry about the processor. It can more than handle a simple task. However, in my use cases, and I know this isn't going to be the use case for everyone, I mainly use my Macs for video editing, photo editing, and sometimes playing some games. For video and photo editing, this MacBook Pro has mostly been great, which is why I've been taking it with me instead of my 15 inch version whenever I have to leave the house. I appreciate the lighter weight and that multi-core CPU, which is a quad core processor, can more than keep up with my 4K Final Cut Pro projects. However, it's not all perfect. My only hang up is that I got the entry level model with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I think for my needs handling 4K video files that are usually longer than 20 minutes, I think I could have really benefited from an extra eight gigabytes of RAM. When I am working on those longer video files, sometimes Final Cut Pro 10 will freeze up a little bit and I will get the spinning beach ball, and that can last around 30 seconds sometimes, which seems to be a RAM constraint. So this is something that you can fix if you decide to order this machine and you you also have to edit large 4K video files, you'll definitely benefit from getting an extra eight gigabytes of RAM and bumping that up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. As for other use cases like gaming, of course this has an integrated Intel Iris Plus 645 graphics card, so you really shouldn't expect top-notch gaming performance from an integrated graphics card. With that being said, if you temper your expectations a little bit, you're playing on lower to medium settings, especially if the game is well optimized for Mac OS, you should have no issue playing on that lower setting and you can definitely get some light gaming sessions out of this 13 inch entry level MacBook Pro. If you are doing any sort of heavy graphic intensive tasks and you want better graphics performance, you definitely gotta look at the 15 inch MacBook Pro, which does come with a dedicated graphics card. And if you really, really want better graphics performance, definitely pick up that Vega 20 GPU option. It is a big boost in performance. I would also like to take the time to maybe reclassify a score after using this MacBook Pro a little bit longer than my initial review. I've been finding that I've been getting actually a little bit better battery life than in my initial review where I gave it six to eight hours of battery life. Now I'm not getting a lot more battery life, but about an hour more. So I'm kind of bumping that up to more to the seven to nine hours of battery life range. Okay, and before we wrap up this one one month later review, I wanna talk a little bit more about the fan noise and heat of this 13 inch MacBook Pro. Like I mentioned in other videos, the heat can get a little hot depending on how you use this machine. If you're watching 4K videos in Chrome, it gets hot, but if you use Safari, you'll probably be fine. Of course, if you're gaming or running Final Cut Pro 10 or photo editing or just doing something that pegs that CPU, your MacBook Pro can get hot. Now, although this laptop was certainly capable of getting warm, I found it to be a much better experience than the 13 inch 2018 MacBook Pro. When I reviewed that unit, I found that the bottom of that laptop got really hot, almost searing hot, very uncomfortable to use on your lap, where this 2019 entry level MacBook Pro, although it did get warm, I could still use it on my lap even when editing video in Final Cut Pro 10. That also leads me to the fan noise, which is also a mixed bag on even the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, if you're just doing normal everyday tasks, especially if you're just browsing the web, again, in Safari, which is very optimized, if you're using Chrome, you might have a different experience, but I use Safari. If I'm browsing the web, if I'm watching videos, I never really hear that fan spin up too much. However, if I do edit a video in Final Cut Pro 10, if I'm editing photos, if I'm doing something like exporting a video which does use that CPU, you can definitely hear the fan spin up. They do get very loud, but again, that is because you are using a lot of the power of that CPU and Apple does need to cool down that processor. So although the MacBook Pro can be silent sometimes, if you are doing something more intensive, expect those fans to kick up. All right, so the 13 inch 2019 MacBook Pro one month later, do I still recommend it? Yes, I do still recommend it. I still think this is one of Apple's better value in years for their entry level lineups. It comes with a quad core processor and I think it is worthy of that Pro name where I probably couldn't say that about the previous entry level version to this laptop. However, questions still do remain about the future of Apple's laptop lineup. It's no secret that Apple is working on a 16 inch bezel-less MacBook Pro and it's rumored to be getting rid of the butterfly keyboard in favor of a traditional scissor switch mechanism 
And it's also rumored that Apple will be rolling out that new keyboard to laptops like this entry-level 2019 MacBook Pro in 2020. So even though I do like and I do recommend this 2019 MacBook Pro, if you don't need a MacBook right away, if you can wait out just a little bit longer until 2020, you might be able to get a MacBook Pro that's not gonna have any worry of keyboard issues. And of course, you're also probably going to get some additional benefits as well. But that is an open question and that is in the future. And as it stands today, I think the 2019 entry-level MacBook Pro is one of the better values in Apple's lineup. If you're in the market for an Apple laptop and you need more power than the MacBook Air, you should definitely be looking at this unit first. All right, and that's gonna do it for this video. As always, if you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna support the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description and be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, PDF Element. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.